All right, so now this brings us to the next set of coincidences, and this involves uh, Alistair Crowley and the Moon Child. All right, so uh, number three, Alistair Crowley's June 14th, 1946 letter about the Moon Child. All right, so let's now take a look at a letter from the infamous occultist Alistair Crowley to a student, Grady or Grady Lewis McMurtry, that just so happens to be dated June 14th, 1946, Trump's birthday, of course. So in the letter, he mentions that NASA pioneer Jack Parsons and Scientology founder Ron Hubbard, again, taking ideas from uh, Crowley himself, are attempting to produce a, quote, moon child, or moon child with a space there, depending on how, how you want to spell. All right, so here, we'll get to the letter soon. So Jack, Ron, and the goat. Here's a letter from Crowley to Grady McMurtry, dated June 14, 1946, E.V, or Era Vulgaris, which is pseudo-Latin for common era. All right, so here's the letter here. This is from Netherwood, the Ridge, uh, Hastings, England, June 14, 1946. And this is a Crowley writing, thrice illumined, uh, illuminated, thrice illustrious, and very dear brother. <laughs> so this is how these occultists uh, greet themselves. Uh, Do what thou will shall be the whole of the law. That's uh, Crowley's uh, uh, Thelma religion uh, quote. So I was delighted to have your letter of the 12th of May, and I have not been able to answer it till now. My eyes are really so bad that I have been... Uh, that I have had to get someone to read out your letter to me, and I'm afraid her time being very limited, I've had to postpone the reading of your poem until my new glasses come, at the best. And then he goes on, It is not good talking about Freighter 210, referring to Jack Parsons, I guess that's the title they were given, uh, given each other, coming over. Yeah, so it was not good talking about uh, Jack Parsons coming over. He has got under the influence of a person, referring to Ron Hubbard, whom I believe to be an ordinary con man. At any rate, he is acting quite insanely, and as as far as I can see, both deceitfully and dishonorably. I am still waiting to hear whether the adverb quote dishonestly should be ad should not be added to this list. In any case, he would not come because oh, curse these people have no ideas of their own can, and can do nothing but pick up my ideas and try to put them into operation without without in the least understanding them or knowing how to bring them to success. Apparently, he or Ron or somebody is producing a moon child. Uh, and then he writes, I get fairly frantic when I contemplate the idiocy of these goats, and I apologize to goats. And uh, yeah, so Crowley is basically grilling uh, Ron and Jack Parsons. All right, and uh, it, the letter continues. I'm just going to skip that and go to the ending of his uh, signature. So love is the law, love under will, yours ever, 666. And he, he write that down. And then he wrote it again. This is Grady, Grady L. McMurtry, 1661 Sacramento. So he's writing it to it in San Francisco, California, apartment three. Uh, written postscript, uh, dear Grady, love. I hope to see you soon. Alistair, so he wrote this, I think, uh, after he wrote the letter. And, uh, here's images of the actual letter. They could be seen here. And, uh, it looks like this. So thrice illumined, thrice illustrious, uh, and very dear brother, etc. And there is the moon child right here talking about <laughs> uh, Ron and Jack making a moon child. Anyways, the letter keeps going on and on. And there is how he signature six six six, and there's a postscript writing it after the after the um, letter is already written. All right. Anyways, going further, let's just get some context on this moon child uh, mumbo jumbo. So background on the moon child. So the moon child is a magical being produced from the impregnating of a woman by the spirit of a goddess called Babylon. And uh, according, yeah, this is according to Alistair Crowley's Thelma religion thus producing a human reincarnation of Babylon to uh, help or save humanity, and all this through the use of sex magic rituals. <laughs> L-O-L. <laughs> all right, so Emmius, note and warning, uh, do your own digging as to what this means and what types of, quote, rituals were performed, and I'll just uh, leave it at that so you can <laughs> dive into that if you are old enough and have the mental fortitude to... <laughs> Uh, to me, uh, yeah, to, just to uh, look at what they're doing. Anyways, Alistair Crowley had written many works on the Moonchild, and one of which was the fictional 1917 novel titled uh, "Quote Moonchild," which was which was first published in 1929. So uh, here, yes, was the novel in 1917. He wrote the novel there, and then uh, then he published it as a book or something. Uh, 1929. Anyway, so here's the Moonchild. 
Uh, going here, this is cover of the uh, Wiser edition published in 1970. There's the uh, woman, there's the moon, there's the child. And here's another one, front and back covers, looks like this. And there's um, yeah, some Satan looking figure there. Very interesting. And uh, this is a uh, Moonchild All Scrawly. This is with a book edition with no image covers. And here's another one, uh, the Dennis Wheatley Library of the Cult, uh, Moonchild. And has an interesting write up on the back. So there's a child holding a skull there. With some uh, letters there, Zod I mean, with the Zodiac, I believe. Yeah, those are symbols of the Zodiac. And here is uh, written here, homunculus, and written over here. I'll read across on here what it says. Yeah, so 1974 edition. Interesting description in the back cover, homunculus. Uh, yeah, actually, I think it's pronounced homunculus. Yeah, homunculus uh, conjured up by magic to possess the body of a human and then Alistair Crowley, the great beast, that's what he calls himself, describes in one of his rare works of fiction the mystic practices passed down through the annals of the occult, the sens sensuous contrivances or clever schemes of a lunar spirit. And here's another cover, a very interesting, a chilling novel of magical possession by the century's most notorious occultist. So this is a very interesting cover, design of a blonde child, either girl or boy. But again, blonde child, you got uh, Trump there <laughs> matching that as well. There's the moon, moon child, epic, epic stuff. So note that homun uh, homunculus is the occult hypothetical concept of trying to produce a miniature artificial human, while Aleister Crowley's usage of homunculus may be symbolic and refer to one's true self. And in the novel, they're talking about uh, producing a moon child and so on. So very, very fascinating uh, stuff there. All right, so now let's uh, read some more info on this Babylon working on this Moon Child production setup and the people behind us, Jack Parsons and uh, Ron Hubbard and the Babylon working. So from January to March 1946, again, this is the uh, birth year of Donald Trump, uh, NASA pioneer Jack Parsons and Scientology founder L. Ron Hubbard undertook the Babylon working, which was a series of magical rituals in Pasadena, California, to manifest the moon child, aka individual uh, incarnation of the Babylon goddess, into the world as per Crowley's writings, of which a similar project was in his 1917 novel, Moon Child. And now if we go to the Wikipedia page on this, and the references has some interesting quotes on it, so reference 16, so the aim of Parsons' Babylon working was to first identify a female partner who would serve as his partner in esoteric sexual rituals, the partner would then become the vessel for the magical, and notice the use of the K for this magic there, child or moon child, a supernatural offspring that would, that would be the embodiment of ultimate power. <laughs> According to pa Parson's account of March uh, 2 to 3, uh, 1946, uh, Hubbard channeled the voice of Babylon speaking as a beautiful but terrible lady. All right, so Ron Hubbard channeled that voice, the Scientology founder. It's interesting. So reference 17, the ultimate goal of these operations carried out during February or January. Um, yeah, because it says earlier January. Or uh, yeah, initially uh, it says January to, to March. Um, but here it says uh, February. Um, but, but anyways, Jan January or February and March 1946 was to give birth to the magical being or moon child described in Crowley's works using the powerful energy of IX degree or ninth degree sex magic the rites were int intended to open a doorway through which the goddess Babylon herself might appear in human form. All right, so there's different degrees of this uh, magic uh, with a K there. Interesting. So fittingly, Jack Parsons has a moon crater named after him. Yeah, so even him uh, is on the far side of the moon. So, uh, so uh, Parsons moon crater named after Jack Parsons. Again, of course, because we're dealing with the moon, moon child, Trump, blood moon, and so on. And of course, the con artist Ron Hubbard both looks like Donald Trump and may have many of the exact same characteristics. And this is even written in mainstream news as uh, Trump got elected, or all about to get elected. And this is actually before, yeah, this was written before he got elected. It's 2016, April 3rd, 2016. So Donald Trump is the L. Ron Hubbard of politics, two of a kind. And he even looks just like him there. There's L. Ron Hubbard, there's Trump. Or, or the other one is, I'm not sure. <laughs> that's, they look, that's, they look pretty identical. Anyway, so there's Trump, there's L. Ron Hubbard, they look very similar, both got the, the similar hair setups, and uh, they're both white. <laughs> and even more bizarrely, and a small precinct in uh, LA or Los Angeles, California, whom almost always vote overwhelmingly for Democrats. So yeah, basically LA, California is pretty much all Democrats. 
voted for Trump or Republican in 2016 for the first time since at least 2000, the year 2000, and half, half the voters, and yeah, and half of the voters were Scientologists. In other words, L. Ron Hubbard, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, the religion uh, L. Ron Hubbard started. So LA Times, so, so Trump won this little chunk of Los Angeles where half of the voters are linked uh, yeah, to Scientology. So more than, more than 250 voters listed addresses of L. Ron Hubbard Way. So the actual address is L. Ron Hubbard Way, named for the science fiction writer who founded the church in 1954. It's the Scientology Church and so on. So from the article, it says, but while nearly all of the surrounding region voted for the Democratic former Secretary of State uh, Hillary Clinton, one little chunk of Hollywood best known for the Church of Scientology's, quote, big blue complex went red, picking the Republican uh, billionaire instead. And the precinct wedged between Hollywood Boulevard and Fountain Avenue, tipped to Trump by just three votes, 347 to 344. It marked the first time since at least 2000 that the area went Republican. And in 2012, uh, President Barack Obama defeated Governor Mitt Romney by 81 votes, uh, 316 to 235. It's a pretty fascinating stuff. So you got the uh, moon crater for Jack Parsons, Moonchild, Alistair Crowley. And then you got Al Ron Hubbard, who looks like Trump and might be Trump's clone. <laughs> and and uh, the Scientologists are Scientologists are voting for him. And the road that they're uh, listed at is L. Ron Hubbard way. So you can't make this stuff up. All right. So now continuing further, and uh, this is another set of coincidences, but this is still uh, related to the Moonchild one. So this is a number four Strange Angel TV series released on June fourteenth. 2018, 2018, again, this is during Trump's presidency. So this connection to June 14th, uh, Trump's birth month and birthday follows from the earlier section on the moon child. And let's first uh, quickly recap. So January to March 1946, Jack Parsons and Ron Hubbard undergo sex magic rituals to produce a moon child. And then June 14th, 1946, again, these are all Trump's uh, birth year. This is Trump's birthday. Uh, Alistair Crowley writes a letter discussing Jack and Ron's attempts at producing a moon child. And again, he has to have, uh, write this letter on a, on a blood moon. So now if we fast forward to 2016, Trump wins the, 20, the, the U.S. election and is sworn in as president in 2017. A year later in 2018, the large media company CBS launches a TV series about the controversial life of Jack Parsons and is called Strange Angel, The Otherworldly Life of Rocket Scientist John Whiteside Parsons. All right, so yeah, so they launched a TV series during Trump's presidency, and there's, this is supposed to be uh, uh, Jack Parsons. Uh, he has that uh, that mustache uh, like that, and this is Strange Angel, Paramount Plus original, and uh, yeah, I'm not sure who these are supposed to be. Yeah, this may be Ron Hubbard. Uh, this may be the Moonchild woman, <laughs> but uh, that is for yeah for further viewing if I ever decide to watch this. Uh, anyway, so source Strange Angel cover. Jack Parsons is on the left. That's all I know for sure. Anyways, uh, continuing further, so Strange Angel just so happens to have been released on Thursday, June 14th, aka Trump's birthday, hashtag wow. Note that the TV series was cancelled after just two seasons, and the second season premiered on Thursday, June 13th, 2019. So again, both of them were on Thursdays, so they wanted to post on the Thursday, just primetime Thursday, and the first one's obviously June 14th, the second June 13th, so if it was June 14th, they were going to go with that as well. It was a Thursday. So Trump then goes on to lose the 2020 U.S. election after the series was canceled on the year before. And to make things even more bizarre, the very first scene of the Strange Angel series on June 14th, 2018, is the first scene of the entire movie series, I mean, uh, TV series, was a blood moon. Again, this is Trump's presidency, June 14th, talking about the moon child. Hashtag, you can't make this stuff up. And there's uh, Twitter here. Uh, link there. So Strange Angel Season 1, Episode 1, first scene is a blood moon, and they also mentioned Beast as well, which is uh, interesting right after this. So there's a blood moon on Trump's birthday, June 14th, Trump's presidency, and uh, again, this is Jack Parsons, Life of Jack Parsons by a documentary. And uh, here's uh, just another note on Jack Parsons, a jet-propelled uh, Antichrist documentary. This is a very interesting. So another interesting bit of information regarding Jack Parsons is that there was a 2006 documentary made about him called Jack Parsons, Jet Propelled uh, Antichrist, and so on. So, yeah, so Jack Parsons uh, viewed himself as uh, the Antichrist for a while. I believe um, uh, Alistair Crowley uh, may have done that for himself as well. So the documentary states that several years before his death in June 17th, 
1952 from a supposed home laboratory explosion. Uh, he had written to Aleister Crowley saying he will be blown away when Babylon, whom is, in, uh, quote, incarnate in the earth today, on the hour uh, Babylon makes her, quote, proper manifestation. And I'll read that uh, full quote soon from this documentary on Jack Parsons. Again, he writes uh, a few years before his death to Aleister Crowley and pretty much predicts his uh, or foreshadows his death. So Jack Parsons, Jet Propelled Antichrist, has <laughs> a very interesting uh, design here. Jack Parsons is that uh, mustache there. And there is the uh, Moon Child, or the production of the Moon Child. Uh, there's some demon. There's uh, uh, the woman he's doing the rituals with, and uh, then there's the the um, yeah, rocket that he was uh, working on <laughs> for uh, for uh, yeah for jet propulsion uh, laboratories before uh, it merged with uh, NASA or before NASA was created and helped pioneer NASA. So again, this is a movie cover from the IMDb page of that documentary. Now, if you go to the uh, 46, uh, YouTube uh, link of it, the 46 minute, 18 second mark of the video, and uh, this is quoted in the documentary. So with that, uh, this is quoted as, um, as Jack Parsons writing to Alistair Crowley a few years before his own death. And it states, Babylon is incarnate on the earth today, awaiting the proper hour of her manifestation. And in that day, my work will be accomplished and I'll be blown away upon the breath of the fire. Absolutely amazing. All right, so pretty fascinating and bizarre stuff indeed.